In farming, the manure applied to crops and expected yield largely depends on the kind of compost that you apply, being it open field or in greenhouse. Thanks for joining me on The Ghanaian Farmer. My name is Enyunam. We are all the way in the Volta region. And as the farming season is about to start in West Africa, precisely Ghana, I am sure a lot of farmers are looking forward, are thinking, are considering different ways to planting healthy and uh, good kind of crops for us to consume in the house. So today our focus is going to be on manure how to prepare your own manure to help you produce healthy and organic food for the public consumption. If this is your first time on my channel, please subscribe to it, share the link, and please don't skip the ad when it's playing. I'm going to be chit-chatting with Matthew Nang. He is the manager in charge of warehouse here in Marflesh Trust, Ghana Limited. I'm going for a quick bit, and when I come back, I'll be engaging Matthew in a very short but detailed conversation. Stay tuned. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. If you're just tuning in, you're watching The Ghanaian Farmer. My name is Enyunam and standing next to me is Matthew. Matthew, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Enyunam. How important is the kind of specific manure that we apply during farming? Um, for manure, for instance, well, for now in the continent, we are all concerned about input prices, yeah. especially chemical fertilizers, and then other input that are costly now. Mm. So for now, mm. I think for sustainability sake, mm. uh, organic manure is becoming the option for us in this continent. Mm. So most farmers mm -hmm. are now putting up measures to use organic manure instead of the chemical fer uh, fertilizers that okay. are very costly. Mm. But with that, it has we have different types of manure okay. that are farmers can use. Right. Yeah, but mostly people prefer the chicken dropping, mm -hmm. the cow dung mm -hmm. that the are pig. easily uh, that are easily available. Oh, okay. Yes. So the kind of manure mm -hmm. actually will help you uh, to identify the, probably the type of production okay. you probably go into. Oh, okay. Yes. So for cow dung, mm -hmm. it is easily available. Anybody can get it at any point in time. Mm -hmm. Even with the chicken, uh, the, the chicken dropping. Mm -hmm. Um, recently, we all have poultry, the poultry industry is facing a lot of difficulty. Yeah. So accessing uh, chicken dropping is becoming, is becoming difficult. a difficult okay. issue here. Mm. So, but I think maybe if you get a small quantity with the normal mm -hmm. compost or whatever it is, you can prepare a very good uh, organic manure for your farm. Okay. Uh, yes. All right. Now, uh, the manure, is it for both open field and greenhouse or the two types of farming de de demand different types of manure? Uh, yes, the two will probably demand different types of manure. Okay. But if you use still the same thing outside, uh -huh. you still get the same result. Result. Yes, but for the greenhouse, mm -hmm. to be specific, mm -hmm. uh, the kind of manure you should use mm -hmm. um, should be something that is very light. Okay. It should be something that had a, a good drainage. It should be something that do not easily uh, get you into problem in okay. terms of uh, pests and diseases. Right. So there are a lot of consideration on both sides. Okay. Uh -huh. So for the greenhouse, you mm -hmm. realize that most mm -hmm. of the time mm -hmm. we do not use the manure alone. Okay. We either mix it with a particular uh, uh, material, either the uh, the coconut peat okay. or the rice husk, or some people even use the uh, wood savings. Okay. Yes. So I see. Depend on uh, both angles, okay. but the, the greenhouse will surely have some specification in terms of that you have to consider yeah, have when to consider preparing the manure. Yes. Okay. Now, what kind of crops? Assuming that I am opting for an open field, what kind of crops do I prepare manure for? Uh, I think all crops do need uh, organic uh, matter. Okay. Or organic manure. Okay. Uh, if you check very well, mm -hmm. vegetables, for instance, mm. even overall nutrient supply, mm. they need like 65% of organic matter okay. in order to do well. Right. Yes. And then if you also look at some plants like uh, the tree crops, 
yes they need but that one it, they don't need much manure right. but for vegetables and then cereals mm. definitely you need uh, organic manure okay to, to produce all right so the, the the manure behind mm. us what and what vegetables are you using these to actually grow yes what what we are seeing behind mm. is actually uh, cocoa peat uh -huh. mixed with uh, organic manure okay and then the rice husks right yeah so what we are using uh, them to produce is um, cucumber mm -hmm. tomatoes mm -hmm. we have uh, bell pepper mm -hmm. uh, the hot pepper we have melon mm -hmm. that we are also using it to produce okay yes and then even our sweet potato vines uh, you also use it uh, multiplication okay. that is what we use okay yes. now let's go through the preparation stage when when you move in the I don't know which comes first, either the chicken manure or the rice husk or the cocoa peat and then add it with the other things. Take me through the step by step, how you bring them together before we see this. And also when you mix it down this way, how long does it take before it is ready to be taken to the uh, plastics we see before you even drop your seed inside? Yes, mm. thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, the, the preparation process, mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's simple. Okay. And then I think everybody can actually do it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what you need to do is normally by over here, mm -hmm. mostly whatever residue or leftover plant that is left in the tunnel, we carry all of them and then prepare a compost which we also sometimes use. You mean plants that have produced fruit over the period? Yes. When you cut. consider it as old, yes. you cut them yes. and gather them at a particular place? Yes. Okay. And then we prepare our organic manure okay. uh, there. So but mostly mm. the, uh, the, on a commercial base, mm -hmm. or on a, on a, yeah, on a commercial base, mm. if you are using it, you are producing it for sale. Mm. Normally there is something you need to add. Okay. Um, for instance, when you prepare your ground whether by a hole mm -hmm. or maybe a plastic mm -hmm. uh, platform mm -hmm. what you need to do is you always uh, get some ash on the ground okay first is it charcoal ash um any woody ash especially okay. if you get a neem ash, uh, ash mm -hmm. to be better all first. right okay uh, okay so you get the ash the mm -hmm. ash has a, a very important role or mm -hmm. so many benefits for you adding the, uh, the, the ash mm. at the base mm. before you compound your compost. Okay. One, the, the number one is the fungal. Mm. It controls the fungal probability that could occur in the process. Uh, number two, it acidifies the, the, the organic manure you are preparing. Okay. Yes, normally you realize that most of the plants we do in the greenhouse in the open field, they do best within mm. six to 6.5 uh this uh, ph okay and uh, that's the range so yeah. if you don't add the ash you may not meet that uh, target okay uh -huh. so what you do is just get your platform mm -hmm. clear the place mm -hmm. pour some ash around mm -hmm. before you if you get some green leaves mm -hmm. or any discarding or uh, uh, the may stock leftover or rice or anything you just compound them and then probably get your chicken dropping or even if there's a goat or a sheep or any of these animal dropping you add to it get some moisture or water water small around it and then get a cover if probably if you don't have a proper cover you get a uh, any of these big uh, plastic rubbers and cover it around for three months okay yes Three take, months. Yeah, you just leave it for some three months for it to uh, decompose properly. Okay. Yeah, if you don't also allow it up to that point, but but maybe somebody maybe the time is catching up. Yes, because uh, by end of this month to first week in April, the rains will start, yeah. and so everybody will be in a hurry. I have to leave it for three months. That is, it means that it's fully ready. But how about I just learnt about it? The rains. We are hoping that. Ending of this month, heading to first week in April, it will start for me to plant things. So uh, it means that I'm far behind time. Is that correct? Um, no. Okay. Uh, what you do is, since if you get the animal droppings mm. ready, mm. for what you need to do is, maybe one month you can compound this one month. Okay. Uh, but what you do is, 
before you send it to the field or you send it to your rubbers or whatever you want to do your planting, uh, what you need to do is you have to water it properly, okay. cover it for three days. Okay. Uh, in that case, any camp where maybe uh, the decomposition that is still chemical reaction that is still taking, taking place, place would probably uh, dissolve or mm. uh, probably complete mm. and it would be safer for you to to apply on your, mm. your on your farm mm. uh, but if it is not properly decomposed and you joke with your plant you burn them up ah. that is one of the the key things you have to look at I see. Uh, okay. so you have to water it properly if you want to use it early mm. yes three days you expose it over the night mm -hmm. And then the fourth day, you can uncover them. it and then yeah, you start using it. it yeah. Okay, so when I move it to the open field farm, mm. how do I do it? Do I uh, put it, dig a hole, put them inside before I plant? Like you put do in a greenhouse, you pour it in something before you drop your seed. Or in the open field, I have to mix it with my whole, you know, land and then, you know, uh, mix it together. How do I do it in the open field? Yes, for the open field, Actually, uh -huh. it is one of the areas probably I am trying hard to, to understand, to, to how understand they about it. but okay. um, I'm actually writing something about it okay. uh, as to how to go about it. If, because right now, mm. the farmer may not be able to get plenty manure for one acre. Oh, okay. uh, for now, we all understand the system. It's limited. It's difficult to get. Okay. So okay. what probably... You see the cabbage mm. we have tried mm. there. That is the, the trial we are, we are, okay. we are doing. Okay. So what you need is mm. um, at where you want to plant the, the crop, mm. if it is, uh, let me say, a maize mm. that you want to plant, mm. maybe after pegging your, or lining up, mm -hmm. and whatever you want to do, you can just let your small boy or anybody just cut open with the hoe. Just put that manure in around there. where okay. inside where you okay. want to plant. Okay, okay. And All then right. you just sow the seeds oh, okay. there. Gradually, gradually, we would hear. Mm. You realize that your soil keep it will keep on changing okay. until you have a complete organic right. soil. Okay, okay. That's so right. I think mm. for now, mm. because of the system we are in, the scarcity. Uh, yeah. So it's that hard to a, use this alone to fill or farm on a whole parcel of yes. land. Okay. Yes. All right, that's fine. So when we look at cost involved, I want I guess this is less expensive than the chemical fertilizer. Is that correct? Yes. But when it comes to effectiveness, there are others who also allege that the chemical fertilizer is more effective than the organic. How true is that? Yeah, there are different systems. We have the conventional system. Mm the organic uh, system mm. and then we have the 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 combined both organic and then the conventional mm. uh, system mm. and then research has proven mm. that conventional ones does better yes it is a fact okay organic mm. with less the conventional in the medium okay. but we are looking at sustainability or whatever you are always doing okay. you do not only want to harvest plenty mm. for this year mm. when this year probably you, you harvest have less, okay. or the rest of the years mm. you'll be struggling to produce. So, uh, on a wide note, mm. it is advisable probably we go by the combined, both conventional and then the organic. In order, because if you also don't produce more food, you may not be able to feed your family exactly. or get the required exactly. yields to sustain you. Exactly. So we are all preaching for yeah. the both. Yeah. We have we cannot let go. Okay. Uh, conventional mm. totally, we can also say. Uh, organic totally mm. but you try to find a way to yes, match the, the two together. and then use it for yes. your farming so yes. that said uh just a little bit of tips on how to use organic manure for farming uh, i think it's more more easy if you're into greenhouses but if it's open field and you want to practice then you want to find ways and means to combine the two you should seek an expert advice if you want to combine it so that the agronomist would guide you or any agri officer, whatever region you find yourself, so long as you are in Ghana, ask your agri officer, I want to combine both uh, organic manure and the regular fertilizer, the chemical fertilizer for farming. How do I go about it? And they'll help you. That way it helps you cut down costs, it helps you sustain production, and it also helps enrich your soil. My name is Enyunam, and my guest, Matthew Nang, is a manager in charge of 
Greenhouse and Massless Trust, Ghana Limited. If you want more videos about everything agriculture, this is the best platform. Subscribe, share, and don't skip the ad. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next week. Thank you very much, Martin. Thank you.